What's up YouTube and welcome back to In The Shop TV. So this is officially what I'm considering day one of our 55 Chevy truck build. I'm considering this day one because we're starting from the bottom up. We're starting with our chassis. We're gonna strip everything down. There's a lot of brake lines on it, some dirt. Clean it up. We're gonna paint it, but not yet. We're gonna do some custom suspension. But for right now, I think what we're, the plan of attack is gonna to be to work from the front back. And um, there's a couple things I have to address. Namely, you can see right here, this corner of the frame is bent inwards. It's not structural. It's only from this cross member forward right here. So um, I'm gonna to try to attempt to bend that out and straighten it. This side, there's some minor folding and cutting from um, that same impact. So we're gonna go ahead and make some cuts, weld in a new piece and see if we can get that straightened out. I think after that, we'll just start disassembling some things that have to come off this to get ready to uh, put our front suspension on. So here's a better look at the chassis from the front. You can see that we have that bend right there and it's only from here forward. The only thing that mounts up here is the front bumper. So, I mean, if you really wanted to be sloppy, you could technically shim it. There's a bracket that comes off the bumper. You can shim it right there to make up for the space and it would be just fine. And no one would ever see that. Um, but since we're, I mean, we're going this far where we have just a plain raw chassis sitting on the floor of the shop. So, I mean, it's worth just a few minutes extra effort or however long it takes to try and straighten that out. So let's go ahead and get started on this side with our cutting. All right, so we've got our piece for right here, which I just showed you. Right now what I'm trying to do is uh, I made a relief cut right here because this corner was kind of badly disfigured and being that it was still connected, it was really hard to kind of shape these two pieces. So I made a relief cut. I was able to bang this part in a little bit. Um, came down with this part a little bit because we have still have a little bit of a hump here, which I'm gonna try to pound down a little bit more. And there's a little bit of a dimple right here. I'm gonna try to pound out from the back but I'm gonna keep plugging away at this piece and see if I can bring um, a little bit closer together right here. All right, so there we go. Nice and close together. I'm pretty happy with that. I was kind of struggling because I would, I would hit it here and pound it down and then I would go a little bit too far and I still have this bump here. Um, so what I did was I took this long, I have this long kind of pry bar and I would just stick it in there and then brace the top corner while pounding down right here on that lump. And that just kind of brought that whole relief cut a lot closer together, made this level with the corner, and it kind of got rid of that lump quite a bit. So once I shoot some weld in there, I think we're gonna be pretty happy with that. The other side we've got to work on because we have our bend that comes in. This is a Harbor Freight four ton press. A lot of people refer to these as port powers. So I just got it positioned right there on that thicker bracket. Then they've got the wider foot set kind of on a diagonal angle here on the, on the side of the frame rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and start compressing this and see if we get some movement outward on that frame. And we'll keep doing like little tiny adjustments and see if we can get it to move over just a little bit more. Another thing is too, when I go to release the pressure on this, I'm sure this is gonna kind of kick back in a little bit. So I don't know, we'll keep trying. All right, that's our third attempt. I mean, it's really, really close to being straight does look like it's starting to kind of kick this side out a tiny bit. So I don't think I'm going to go any further. I'm going to loosen it up and see what happens when we get some contraction and see how it looks. All right, last time, what I did here, I think I got it. I mean, that looks pretty good. I just moved this side out a bit further um, where it's the weakest at the end. Because while it was looked like it was kind of straightened out this way, it was still kind of leaning in. So I raised this up and gave it a couple more pumps. And I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks right now. All right, guys, so we are really, really close. Factory width of this frame is 34 inches, which we are right on, um, close to the cross member. And if we come to the edge of the frame, we are just in by a sixteenth of an inch. I think I'm going to call this good. Okay, guys, so we've got our frame as straight as possibly can be within our ability. Uh, what we're going to do now is get started welding. So we'll break out the welding machine and get started. Okay guys, what we're using is a Miller 215 Multimatic. Uh, it has a feature called Auto Set where you basically just, you know, tell it what material thickness uh, you're welding and what type of wire you're using. And it pretty much 
shoots you at a generic setting that's pretty close to what you need. We can go ahead and make adjustments if we need to after the fact. When it comes to welding, just like anything electrical, you really have to rely on a very good ground connection. So what I'm gonna do is this chassis has got some old chassis paint on it, and I don't think it's gonna be a very good connection for us. So I'm gonna go right ahead to this mount right here and just kind of take the wire wheel and clear off some of that paint, get down to bare metal, and put our ground clamp right here. kind of cold so maybe I'll turn up the voltage just a tiny bit. We want to be really careful right here because you know we've got I don't know if you guys can see if there's like a little crack right there where this bolt hole is and you know this piece is just it, it, I don't know when it's it doesn't have a lot of integrity so when you start putting a lot of heat into that you could really start blowing through and knocking chunks off so we've got to be really careful with that. Up bang this little corner in a little bit. I felt the pull as soon as I hit it with the weld. Whenever you hit it with the weld, it'll kind of shrink up and pull in, so I'm gonna just tap this corner in a little bit to line it back up. All right, that lined up pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this piece welded in. bottom piece looks like it was always there and our top piece close that in nicely we got a nice uniform corner up here um, again this is you can see where that kind of buckled in so um, it, you know I'd have to kind of fill that part in with a lot of weld just to get it to look cosmetic I'm not really too concerned about that um, and same thing up here I'd have to maybe cut this section out and weld in a new piece if I want to get rid of that I was really just kind of concerned about making this solid so i think we accomplished our goals i'm going to go ahead and shoot a little um rush reformer paint on this just to keep it from rusting um and i think that's going to be good for the welding all right guys don't tell anyone this is top secret this is kind of a um industry automotive faux pas if you will you're not supposed to do this so um they don't even like to use this word in automotive at least on the forums they don't i think behind a lot of closed door and garages there's probably a lot of that goes on but online it's a no-no um, that crease that was up here was kind of bothering me a little bit. I didn't get it perfect, but just OCD and I didn't want to look at it. So I got some JB Weld and just kind of smeared it on there like body filler, if you will, and just kind of sanded it down and um, pretty smooth. So it's not perfect, but um, it's not driving me crazy anymore. So I'm going to get some paint on that. We'll see how it looks.
All right, guys, there's our finished product, as far as this corner is concerned. I'm uh, reasonably pleased with that. All right, so what we're doing now is kind of this slow and arduous or really annoying process of removing all the frame rivets in this frame. There's a couple of methods to remove them. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking a grinder and I'm grinding the heads kind of in an X pattern just so I can kind of score them almost all the way down to the frame or whatever component that's holding on. And then we're um, getting after it with the old air hammer. Um, I'll tell you what, they were in there so good, some of them I'm just really struggling with it. Um, you know, I guess nearly 70 years of rust. They're coming out, it's just taking forever. The only thing that you gotta be careful with using the air hammer on these things is if there's enough of the piece sticking up, you can kind of tend to mushroom it and then it doesn't want to fit through the hole. Um, it'll still go, but it's just a little more resistant. So just take note of that. You don't want to mushroom them up or gall them up too bad. Anyway, let's get back to it. So with filming and editing, it's probably going to look like a minute to you, but man, I really struggled on these three for a while. This shock mount is finally off and these rivets are popped out. Um, they just, you know, like I said, they're in there you know, for so long that they kind of almost become one with the frame. So um, those are out. That's done. I'm kind of dividing this into thirds, if you I'm going to do like the front one third of the frame and then we'll do the middle third and then the back third. The middle, we've got a bunch of stuff here, namely let me get you brought over here. That cross member um, has like eight rivets on each side. Um, and then there's a spring perch on the bottom of it for the leaf spring. So it kind of sucks. But for right now, I'm almost done with the first third of it. What we're going to do uh, now is just get the uh, bump stops off the frame because we're not going to use those anymore. We're going to go to a front uh, independent front suspension, which the control arms have the bump stops built into them. So um, these were for a solid front axle, like the old style axle that came on this truck. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. I don't think we, I think those are, yeah, those are held in there with uh, nuts and bolts. So in theory, they should come out um, relatively easily. So I'm gonna get after those, cut these brake lines back, and I think we're gonna call it a day for the first third of this chassis. <laughs> That was cool. Yeah, okay. Alright, I'll see you inside. Okay. Later. Okay. Alright guys, so next time I'm gonna take care of that cross member. We're gonna get that off, which is probably gonna be a little bit of a struggle, but you'll be there for it. We have a brake assembly here, this whole big piece has gotta come off. And we've got some brake lines back here. Coming back to the next one, we get to check out a new tool. As for me, I'm gonna clean up this mess right now and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.